All right, GitHub Copilot Agent Mode just was released, and I thought, let's give it a run. I've been using Cursor and Windsurf pretty heavily, um, and I, I, I use it quite a bit. I honestly think it's the killer feature, and I know everyone's exhausted with all the AI hype and whatnot, but it's really cool. So let's try it. I've got this app that I've been working on. Um, it's a party kit app. It's doing real-time drawing um, on this, and I'm eventually going to hook it up to like some LED panels like this. Um, so like, let's add some features. My first thing is like, I want to be able to like type a word and for it to draw in this little pixel grid right here. So let's just go to, we go to chat mode and you make sure you have agent. I'm using Claude three, five Sonnet. I found that to be the best, at least right now. So I'll say, let's add a new feature. When a user types and submits an input, draw that text to the grid with pixels. These are just elements. Um, on the page, like if I inspect element, like these are, oh, these are just buttons um, that have CSS colors associated with them. So it has no idea about this code base. It's never seen it before. So look at this going and scanning my code base. I think this like cool little animation they're doing is, is pretty nifty. Um, and what's cool about these agents is they're modifying your code in real time. And you'll be able to see what it's doing in real time. Um, so, all right, here we go. It modified my index.html and it modified my CSS. Okay. Um, now I need you to actually build the functionality. Here we go. So now it's opening up client.ts. One cool thing that these agents do is they will see if there's any linting issues after it applies. And if it there are linting issues, it'll sort of come back and and fix the code that it has. And then also if you're running terminals inside of agent mode, then it will uh, see if the terminal has successfully exited or not. All right, so um, I see you're using a 64 by 64 grid based on grid size constant. Let's adjust the text rendering to better fit, okay. I'm going to, I'm going to try to try to use it while it's drawing it. Wes, <laughs> holy crap. <laughs> Damn, that's cool. If I change the color, Wes, Wes boss, man. All right. So that, that's a nice adjustment. Um, but then I also want something some other feature right um when you draw the pixels play a little sound that makes it sound like the matrix never actually seen the matrix but i want that like so like i'm curious it, it one thing these agents don't do is like download assets i've asked for it to make me svgs of icons in the past and it's never been good at that um, but if I ask it to play a sound, which I don't have, I'm curious to see what it will do. Um, and like, as you're going through these agents, you can sort of like see what, what there is. You can edit it if you want. And then once you're happy, you sort of accept it. Um, one thing I've done in the past is I've, I've had to like roll back versions. Um, and I haven't noticed the ability to roll back. There's usually like a button to like restore to this checkpoint um there are arrows here where you can you can roll it back but i would like a button just to i simply just want to click on i want the code before i type this thing uh all right the matrix sound is now implemented you'll hear digital beeping sound when drawing individual pixels drawing text and drawing images man all right, i had it i had to restart my recording so i'm record my actual audio that's coming out of my headphones that's pretty cool um let's try wes all right so there it's just all at once um and then if i draw drag and drop an image it also plays it at once so that, that's a bug right so i'm gonna say sounds good but the sounds all play at once when doing a lot like dragging an image in could you space them out? Let's take, a, let's take a look at how does it actually make the sound? It's probably using audio synthesizer. Yeah, play matrix sound, oscillating. 
it's pretty fast. I'm I'm impressed at how quick this is. It, I think it's just as fast, if not. I, I think the windsurf has been the fastest one I've tried so far. But all right, and now let's see. Oh, but now they now they go forever. Oh my gosh, make it stop! All right, that played way too long. Um, so I'm gonna say it plays forever. Please make it play at most one second after the drawing is completed. There we go. Let's let's try another one. Nope. I need to refresh. All right, so that didn't work. When I type West, it should play for one second after it's done drawing. All right, let's see now. Beautiful. So it did it. Okay, good. So I'm going to go ahead and... Oh, it's still, it's still going. We still need to update the regular drawing function. This is really cool that it like... These agents, they sort of just keep going back and forth. I like it. Okay. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and accept it. It doesn't look like I can just accept all of them. Um, it makes you go through... Oh, it's still going. All right. So it did I don't know, four or five different loops through it and reapplied its changes. Now it's working good, Wes. Beautiful. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and accept all those changes. So that is adding a feature. Um, another common thing would be like make it look good. Um, so make this website look really nice. Add a dark mode and make it look like Vercel made it. Another thing you can do with agent mode as this is going is you can reference um, specific parts of your code base. Um, so it will try to figure out what you're talking about and which parts it needs. Um, but if you explicitly want it to use a function, um, you can tell it. You, you type it's usually at or or pound. Yeah, pound. And then you can give it like files or things from the problems editor, like a TypeScript error um, selection, which is what you currently have highlighted, um, failed test changes, parts of your code base, specific functions. Uh, and then, of course, different files you can give it as well. All right, we're generating some new CSS here. I will say immediately I'm I'm noticing that this type of thing is is doing it in steps rather than I find that cursor will do it in more of a one or two swoops. Um, so it seems like a little bit faster. Uh, but here now it has has added the thing here. There's a couple issues. First of all, my grid is gone. And second of all, um, this looks a little bit funky. And did it add dark mode? <laughs> kind of. So uh, let's let's accept what we got there, okay? And then we'll we'll start telling it that it uh, it did something wrong. So the grid disappeared. It's just a little square box, and I. On cursor, you can pop a screenshot in it. Can you do that here? Um, why is it crossed out? The image was not sent to the model. Maybe, why not? Maybe, oh, maybe Claude doesn't take images. There we go. It fixed it. So what was the, what's the fix there, VS Code? All right, it fixed the problem, but it did that same thing where it just like kept going back and finding more things. And I, I probably sat here for three or four minutes while it did that. Um, so I kind of wish that it would just do it in one felt swoop. Um, and I don't really know what these additional steps changed, uh, but we'll go ahead and just accept it because it's code. Let's try to throw an image on there. Beautiful. 
All right, last thing I want to show is uh, simply just like running terminal commands. So I could say like, please start the front end and back end of this app. Um, so I'm hoping it will go into my package JSON and see that there is a front end and back end. Um, so it wants to run npm install. Uh, we don't need to do that. So I'm going to say cancel. Uh, npm run dev. So that's not a command. It's just guessing that. There's not. Let's see what it does when it realizes there is no command. So continue. And then it says missing script. And, and that's it. Okay. So cursor would have taken this error and piped it right back into itself like this. And then it will say, ah, I see what you mean. <laughs> no, now it's trying to uh, make a uh, edit by my package JSON. That's not what I want. Don't. Oh, okay. Maybe not though. So now it's it's running a single command with npm run all, and it also is installing npm run all. So maybe okay. Let's let's go ahead and do that, and. I, it hasn't installed it for me though, so it probably won't work. I'm curious. So, oh come on, npm run all command not found. So that looks like something that hasn't been connected yet. Is the output of the terminal should be piped right back into the agent. Um, so I believe there there should be a way to like just like highlight this. And like say paste it in what it says. All right, well let's just do it. When I run it, I get this error. Okay, there we go. Continue. Now it wants to run dev. And and now it thinks it's good. So Cursor is much better at, at this aspect of it. It would have said, ha, huh, I think there's already something running on the port. Let me figure it out. And then it will run some Unix command to see what is running on port 5555. And it'll say, ah, OK, I understand. Um, something is already running. Would you like me to kill it? And then you can you can say, OK. So that integration, I think, probably can still use some work. But the actual coding, design, debug, it's looking really, really good. They're all using the same models. Um, I'm pretty excited about this. It's a very nice UI. It's, I would say it's probably very close to Cursor Windsurf. Um, and uh, I'm excited to see kind of where it goes from there.